Hey everybody, it's Adam. As you might know, I am out on tour traveling around the country. What you might not know is I'm taking the opportunity in a few places to find out how people are getting kids interested in STEM and STEAM fields. And today in Baltimore, I visited an incredible place called Code in the Schools. I talked to some of the faculty. I talked to some of the students. It's an amazing place. Check it out right now. Gretchen, tell me about Code for Schools. Yeah, Code in the Schools is a nonprofit organization that my husband and I founded about three years ago uh, with the mission to bring computer science education to people who don't have access. So we primarily focus on underserved, underrepresented youth here in Baltimore City. Now, you were telling me that somehow it hasn't been possible to get high school credit for computer science classes for the longest time? So when we started three years ago, there were only nine states that even allowed computer science to count as a graduation requirement. That's crazy, considering <laughs> that that should be like the engine of our economy, Considering right? that there's over half a million jobs that are open and available right now in computer science, it is crazy. So things have gotten a little bit better since then due to the advocacy efforts of large computer science organizations and code.org. It's now 27 states that that will allow computer science to count as a graduation credit. Right. Aside from the huge jobs gap, right? Aside from the fact that that 60% of all STEM jobs are in computing, yeah. and aside from the fact that they're some of the highest paying jobs in STEM, we really feel like computer science, the, the problem solving, the logic, the the skills that you learn when you're when you're writing a piece of code, when you're writing an algorithm, when you're debugging a problem. Those are skills that are applicable no matter what you decide to do. And on top of that, technology is permeating every sector. So even if you want to be an artist, knowing some code is going to serve you really well in the future. Right, it's like a gateway drug to uh, <laughs> critical thinking. Yes, exactly. Did you run into any obstacles with the Board of Education in terms of helping them to understand this at the beginning? It's a little tough initially to get people to understand the difference between basic technology skills and computer science education. So there's a lot of push um, uh, all over the place, really, to get technology into the hands of kids. So getting those Chromebooks in, getting the one-to-one -one iPads. And that's fantastic, because kids do need exposure to that technology. But the technology changes so rapidly that it's really, it can't be just about the technology. It has to be about those foundational skills, the logic, the problem solving, the critical thinking. Right, the technology is a tool, not a skill. Exactly. And you guys are looking to teach the skills. Exactly. Describe to me what Code in the Schools is doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, so we're uh, really hands-on. So we're, we're getting into the schools both during the school day and then after school and out of school time summer programs. So you might see any number of projects happening in one of our classrooms from Arduinos to Raspberry Pi stuff to robotics to more standard sort of web development and game development kinds but, of things. And Baltimore is actually like a, a real key hub of the gaming industry. I, I only just found this. <laughs> Is yeah, that, tell me about yeah, it. we have a number of studios that are both in and around the city. So the studio that's right next door to us, Sparky Pants, is one of the few AAA studios that's located right here in downtown Baltimore. And we've taken a lot of advantage of them <laughs> <laughs> because of that. And so they have um, assisted us with some internship programs. So we actually have a student who is um, went through one of our advanced training programs, who's a senior at a local Baltimore City Public School, who's now an intern at Sparky Pants. Oh, that's cool. I definitely feel like things are moving in a positive direction. The Maryland State Department of Education and the Baltimore City Public School District are both on board in seeing how computer science is a really important piece of uh, training that kids need to be exposed to or education that kids need to have. And we're really excited to be helping not only expand that computer science education directly to kids, but also helping with the teacher training and professional development that will really help teachers to be comfortable bringing computer science education into their own classrooms. Oh my gosh, it's really, really inspiring to be here and uh, we're going to talk to some of your faculty and some of your students later, but thank you so thank much. Thank you for really coming. appreciate you talking to Thanks. Us. She's using milling machines to uh, uh, I know me, Destiny, and Nick, we did a game game, and so we made a video game. It all of a sudden becomes demystified and you understand, oh, it's the same system, it's just more complicated.
What is the difference between before you took any of these classes in terms of how you thought about STEM and now? I really didn't think that there was a way for me to get a, an actual job doing what I wanted to do uh, aside from just going to college and majoring in computer science or computer engineering or some other software development related major. So I don't know, just doing this has really shown me that it's easier, a lot easier to get into. Was it something you wanted to do before you took the classes, was do that kind of design work? Not specifically programming. I always like working with computers, just in general, but uh, definitely after I took the class. And then I started like seeing all the different stuff with how programming works, and I just I loved it. So. What kind of stuff do they have you doing in the internship? I get to actually program every day that I come wow. with my own project. Oh, that's really cool. Cora, what kind of stuff have, uh, are you starting to feel like you'd be interested in? I'm not really sure yet. I know I like to work with computers and so far I've had some practice with coding and I just like the idea of how open it is, like you can literally do anything with it. Uh, do you have an example of something that, uh, that you built and uh, brought to life? Um, we just actually finished our Arduino unit. I love Arduino, I put it in my props a lot. We programmed our Arduino to do a blinking light, a traffic light, an RGB light, and um, like make sound with the potentiometer and it was really difficult but I really enjoyed it. It was like a lot of trial and error and I feel like going through it like one day it might work and then the next day even though we did the same exact thing it wouldn't work so like we had to do a lot of troubleshooting and I feel like that really helped me to really see what the whole computer science thing is about. Guys thank you so much I really appreciate thank it. You. Thank you. So uh, this is a softball, but um, why do we need to teach kids how to code? They mess with technology like all their lives, but they don't know how it works or like how, how even it's even built. It's pre pretty much magic to them. Right. So that's why we need to teach kids how to code. To demystify. Yeah, to demystify. Right. And help them understand. <laughs> yeah. It's still magic to me. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I would argue that you know, it's more than just teaching kids how to code. Because in order to code, you know, you have to have critical thinking skills. You have to be able to ask questions. You have to be able to take a problem and look at it and say, well, what question am I really answering? What, what sort of steps do I need to take? Is this problem one problem or is it actually 12 small problems? And I think the process of teaching those skills to me is almost, almost more important than the actual technical skills of being able to write the code. Because if you can't answer those questions about the world around you, and especially about the technology that, you know, like Derek said, we interact with technology every day. And, you know, we're starting to call younger and younger children, they're digital natives, mm -hmm. almost. Their whole world is digital, the whole world is technology. And I think that that's particularly important in Baltimore right now, is telling our, our youth that they can be in control of the world around them and that they don't have to um, be passive participants in a society or... Um, a culture that's sort of trying to dictate who they are, um, telling them what abilities that they have, what opportunities they have. Um, this is, our classes are a uh, space for them to, to let their creativity rule and to say like, these are the things that I face on a daily basis and I have the power, like Taylor said, to change that instead of waiting for someone else to come in and impose a change for me. So you're talking about giving the kids uh, technological agency. Mm -hmm. um, what have you seen? What have you seen wake up in the kids when they start to realize that they've that they're accessing that? I think there was an old stigma that like coding and, and you know any type of working technology was for you know the dirty kids. That was that was their field. That was yeah. that was their area of relevance. Um, and I think the biggest thing I've seen, especially in our like in school classes, is that. They're starting to see that in our modern era where everything's built on a digital foundation, that's no longer the, the case. Regardless of whether or not you want to be a doctor, a lawyer, or you know, some type of programmer, you, you need somewhere down the line to be able to understand you know, what's going on inside the black box. So I, I think the, the, the coolest thing that I've seen is that they've kind of realized like, oh, hey, you know, like I'm, not, you know, I'm not into Dungeons and & Dragons, but I definitely could get into this <laughs> idea of programming. So. Yeah. It's a vocation like any other. Mm -hmm. I had a really rewarding experience over this past summer. I got to work at a summer camp program through another nonprofit organization that we work with, and I had a group of high school students, and I was teaching a sewable electronics and e-textiles class. And I had 
a student in the class and I asked him one day, I said, well, you know, I don't, I don't want to ask, I don't, I hope you don't take this the wrong way, but why are you, why did you self-select into my class? What are your hobbies? What are your interests? And he said, well, I play sports. I go outside. I'm an athlete. And I was like, well, do you care about technology? Do you like computers or anything? He was like, no, not really. And I was like, well, why did you do this? And he said, I just wanted to do something different. And every day he would say, I can't do this, it's too hard. This is just not for me. But he was the most persistent and the most dedicated student in the whole class to the point that he, even after the end of the program, started volunteering with me in my younger classes, in my younger classrooms. And he realized I started to see this light bulb go off. And I'm like, I can make things with this. I can do what I want to do. I don't have to just be an athlete because he knew that that wasn't a sustainable long-term mm-hmm. option. He knew that it's very easy to fall out of that. And that was such a rewarding experience to see this young man really grow and make this realization that he had the opportunity to do anything he really wanted to, not just the things that his community or his parents had told him he was already good at. What have you found is different from teaching uh, these skills as opposed to social studies? Well, definitely social studies has critical thinking elements to it, mm-hmm. but I would think for a lot more students these days, the one thing I can say is that the teaching of the technology is a lot more relevant than teaching you know, about XYZ president did XYZ thing in this year. So there's a certain amount of relevancy that is that, that draws a lot more students to it. Um, and the fact that uh, unlike history, uh, technology is way more hands-on uh, and it's way more imaginative and creative and that allows an outlet for some students to express themselves. What have you guys found yourselves learning? It's a lot of patience yeah. <laughs> yeah. when it comes to working with middle school. Their hormones are coming their online. Their hormones are crazy, <laughs> but <laughs> I see their potential and it's just up to me. I was having this conversation with a family member last night. They was like, you need to bring out their potential and show them that they can and are capable of, you know, achieving, you know, these goals and skills that you're trying to teach them and that it's just not for um, other, like, nerds, like Josh yeah. was saying, like, nerds, and that they need to see people that look like them that are in this profession, mm-hmm. and maybe they, that will open their mind, and maybe they'll be more willing to participate in the class. Um, do you find the kids, do the kids find any resistance within their own communities about taking the classes? So with some of the students that I've worked with, I work at an after-school center, and the after-school center itself is very supportive, and we still work with them today, and it's one of my favorite places to go in and teach at. But I would even hear parents sometimes question their kids, like, well, why are you learning to make games? At the time I was teaching a game design and computer programming class, well, what are you going to do with that? Why Mm -hmm. does that matter? Why is that important? Because the parents sometimes, very often in the communities that we work with, don't have the technological skills and they don't have the technological literacy as well that they can't relate to what their children are learning. So it's hard for them to foster an environment that encourages it because they think, well, I didn't need it and I haven't used it. So why do my kids need it instead of learning math Mm -hmm. or or like learning things that are going to help them go become a doctor or established career paths that they know are going to be what's successful for their children. Uh, If you guys were uh, going to give advice to new teachers in this field, people wanting to reach out to young people and make them technologically literate, what advice would you have? Any pre-notions you have are incorrect. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Here we go. Mm -hmm. Um, It it is, uh, I don't know, kids kids are almost complete clean slates. Um, And I would definitely say with something like anything in the digital realm or or technology that they've grown up with, I would say almost all of them have the exact same aptitude, regardless of where they are in terms of literacy or, you know, even on, you know, behavioral management. Like, I would say almost all of them have the same capabilities because I've seen wild and amazing things from kids that teachers would have told me, like, it would just be nice if they would sit down and be quiet Mm -hmm. in this class, you know? So... Uh, that, that's, that would be my yeah. absolute biggest advice. Don't All underestimate the students. Really, thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.